Hey guys and girls, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode of Crash Landing with myself, Lewis. Hope you're brilliant. Having yourself a great day, as always. I am back in the city doing some lootings because there are many things to still be had here that we need and uh, specifically all of this stuff. So I just grabbed myself a load of high oven stuff and bits and I found some cobalt upstairs and an alamite scythe head. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, I have got myself some potions of swiftness which I've drunk which are brilliant because that means we can run around like a, a madman and collect all of this stuff. <laughs> which is, you know, pretty handy because we get a lot of bad guys around here. Now, uh, let's just check this one down here, see if we've got anything in here as well. But there's some really good stuff around still to be looted, so I thought we might as well grab all of it and grab as much as we can before we, uh, you know, get really deep into it. I don't know if there's going to be any bad guys in it. Did I already get rid of everything? Yes, I did. Brilliant. And we've got, ooh, some transistors, endery guys, a pneumatic wrench, venath. Let's just put a load of this in here. Yeah, I got some potions of swiftness and potions of strength for this place. Because you never really know how bad it's going to be here. So it's always handy to keep hold of this stuff. We'll put all of our Tinker stuff in there because that's really what we're going to be playing with today. And I'll take this. Because we're always happy to take another redstone energy cell. <laughs> Should we have a look upstairs, see what we've got up there? Actually, I might quickly munch on some mixed salad before we do that. Ooh. I'd like to hear a bad guy. No, no, we're good. We're good. Who are you? Oh, this is. <laughs> it's a new Minecraft elevator. Oh my god, I'm so used to them being the other ones. The instant fail. And. Ah. Well, oh. Hey, get it with you. Um, well, look at that. What have we got in there? Some more compressed iron. Some more seeds. Some transistors. Then that's okay. Let's keep going. So today we're going to be playing with some Tinker's Steelworks. I think that's going to be it, and maybe we'll get into doing some other tinkery goodness. I think that's probably most of these places sorted for now. Ooh, I don't want to hang around because some of these guys are really nasty. <laughs> Hence why we've got the potion of swiftness. But I have made a new area at the base which I'm pretty excited to show you because I've been playing with it for some time to try and get it to look nice. And now that we've got all these tinkery bits, I think we're ready to start making this area look pretty fancy. Fancy, fancy. Yes. Oh, is there a spider in my base? <laughs> Why is there a spider in it? I haven't got around to properly making this area out yet. It's, it's on my list of things to do. Uh, but for now, we've been playing with this stuff. Uh, what do we get? Do we get regular water or cold? We can just use this, can't we? There we go. Uh, <laughs> that can go in there. Factory blocks and all these gizmos, filing cabinets. Can go in there. We don't need any of that. I don't need that. Cool. All right. Let's make our way back to base, and I will show you my uh, my my marvelous creation, <laughs> which is going to be where we're going to do all the processing. So there'll be Tinker's Steelworks, there'll be regular Tinker's Construct. This is where we're going to have our applied energistics, and we'll probably have some thermal expansiony bits in there here and there, but not tons because I've set an area aside for, for all of the thermal expansion stuff. And it's taken me some time to make. I tried to make it look a little bit different. So uh, you'll see when we get in there that it's it, it looks a little bit different because there are they're squids. Squids. I know, right? Squids. But I think it's going to work. Now, one thing I do want to do today is I want to make a deep tank. One of those big deep tanks. Because I've never made one of those before and they look really cool. And that's going to be a great place to hold all of our smelted ores. So that's probably... One thing I want to do, I want to set up the steelworks up in the high oven, and I would like to get my regular Tinker's Construct uh, smeltery in there as well. So that's the list of things to do today. And with all of these bits, we should have enough now to do all of it, hopefully. I got some ice cream as well, what do you think? Doesn't it look nice? <laughs> yummy, yummy ice cream. Oh yes. You know, getting on this train ride never gets old. Never. Although I did, when I was building my room, kind of knock into the side of here. You'll see in a second when we go past. It's just up this way. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I need to kind of mend that bit because I dug into it a little bit. But that's one of the rooms of the new area, so you get to see that in a bit. Okay, so I've just gone and pulled down my smeltery. Let's just make sure that we haven't got any areas where 
bad guys can spawn. Oh, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and I think that's going to be enough stuff to uh, do what we need to do. So let's get some lava because we're going to need that for our tinkers. Now, all of this I'm looking to automate at some point so we can... You know, we don't have to keep changing these around for different lavas and things like that. We can just do it automatically. And most of that's going to probably be done with tesseracts. Although there are some mine factory things that will make lava for us as well. So maybe we can get into that. But let me show you around here this awesome room of amazingness. So down here. Oh, have I still got my light on? There we go. Yeah, so down here, if we have a look, check this place out. Isn't that cool? Let's go downstairs. It took me ages to make this. Oh, I haven't actually finished it yet, but I'm getting there. It's it's on my, uh, it's, it's getting there. Uh, these areas here are going to possibly be other rooms. But while I'm not using them, I'm filling them with water like this. And now and then we'll get squid spawn in there. And it just looks really cool to have all these squiddies just, you know, swimming around, derping around, doing their thing like squids do. It looks really funky. And having them all around the walls, I think, is just going to look awesome. Except for the rooms we're actually going to be doing stuff. So this room over here will be our tinker's room. And then this room over here will be our tinker's steelworks room, which will include our high oven and it will include our, our tank which is going to look awesome. And I think I made this the right size. I just need to double check. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We might have to make this room smaller because I can't actually remember if the deep tank can be... I think it might have to be a five by five instead of a, instead of a, or a seven. I don't know. We'll have a play around in a minute and figure it out. But uh, that's pretty much what this place is going to be. I, th I really like this cobble gen over here as well. We can't get too close because we still warm up really fast. Like if I walk over, you'll see the little temperature at the bottom like fly up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but in there, we've got this. It goes up to a barrel. And then the barrel is feeding the cobblestone to all of the sifters around the top area above us. And then all the spare cobblestones going into these barrels here. So eventually that will fill up. So we'll have, you know, we'll have loads of cobblestone spare, which will be pretty awesome. But let's get started on this steelworks. Now, steelworks is something that I generally don't play with that much, just because oh, I don't. You don't really need to, do you? But it is going to be kind of cool to get into it. So we're going to use these. Now, the tallest we can make it is eight high. Now we're just going to probably go up to the roof for the time being until I raise the roof a little bit. But I think that's going to probably work just, just fine. And uh, we'll bring this around here. So this is kind of like when you just make a regular tinker's construct place, just a little bit cooler guess. Hmm. Do I want to bring it back one? I, I think I'm actually going to bring it back one because having it right close to the wall like that is not great. Yeah, let's do this. Let's bring it back this way a little bit. Yeah, that'll look, that'll look loads nicer. So I'll bring it back along here. There we go. And then we want our uh, controller. So we need to make sure that we have that. So our high oven controller can sit there. So this is much like making a regular Tinker's Construct thing, really. And then we want inputs and outputs. So let's see how many of these we've got. So I've got two scorched ducts, which are good for going out. I've got one drain. So we haven't got too many at the minute, but we've got enough to automate all, which is good, I guess. So we could have on here, we can have one there and one there. And then on here, we could have the drain. And then we can do this. So we need to make sure that we don't go in the middle. We can't do anything in the middle. So it's much like when you're building a, uh, when you're building like a, one of the railcraft furnaces, one of the coke ovens. It's much like building one of those that you kind of have stuff in the middle. But let's see how many we've got. 35. Um, yeah, John, we'll do, we'll do the top as well. There we go good stuff so that should hopefully work now now this guy runs off fuel a little bit differently so it runs off of pure fuel and the only the only stable real pure fuel you can use is charcoal this guy actually won't run off of coal because coal has too many impurities um, so you need charcoal for fuel uh, as far as these go these are for mixing and creating alloys so things like steel and then on here is where we have all of the metals that we want to put in there so obviously for every additional layer that we have <clears throat> we get we get an additional slot and each little slot can hold a full stack of 64 
which is great because that's far more than the regular Tinkers one can. So there's that. And then obviously as we add less to it, it gets more. So the max we can have is an eight high one. If we go any higher than eight, you can do higher than eight, but it's pointless because you won't get any additional slots. So there's not really any point in doing that at all. But that's how that guy looks. Now that's going to do that and then we'll have all the goods coming out of there. I do kind of want the tank to be in here, but I need to figure out the size of the tank. And I don't know if we even have enough of the scorched bricks because they have to go along the bottom. We're going to need to set up the uh, the smeltery as well. So let's go and do that because the smeltery is going to be needed to make some glass that I want to use for it. So let's pop this guy in here. So we'll grab these and put it around here. There we go. And same again, we'll need our controller, which we're going to pop there, I think. Yeah, that's a good place to do it. And we'll have our glass. Let's have our tank. Where should we put our tank? Should we put it here? Uh, yeah, Joe, we'll put it there for the time being. Yeah, there we go. Oh, look, it's still got the lava in it from when I broke it. <laughs> I forgot they did that. And we will have some bricks and some glass. Cool, cool. And we'll have some more brickage. Although on this side, I think on these two, I'm going to put... Let's do this. Yeah, on these sides here, we'll place down our smeltery drains. And there we go. And one thing to think about when it comes to smelteries and where you're going to build it is smelteries do heat you up, much like thermal expansion machines, you know, being next to lava, it does heat you up. So that's the reason why we're having them all in separate rooms, so that if we need, so, you know, we don't have to be near it all the time. We can come and go when we please, and it's not that bad. So that's pretty much that. Now I am looking to automate all of these very soon. So these smart redrains are probably going to come off because I'm going to have the automation getting done in the background. So you won't see any of it. And then I would like to get these bricks going straight up the side. So it looks like it's all kind of built into the wall. That's what we're going to go with. But for the time being, it's, you know, it's going to do the trick, isn't it? So let's get another layer on here. And it, we know we'll just do as many as we can. So let's do that. How many have we got? We've got another nine. Uh, we can probably get another layer in there, actually. Yeah. That looks nice. And how many have we got spare? Let's put... Cool, I like, that looks nice. Now if we got any of these we have, so pop those on there. Cool, cool. That actually looks alright as it is, I think. That looks pretty that looks pretty funky. So let's put down our casting table and this guy. Actually, I think I'm gonna make a load of glass first before we do anything else. So let's pop those on there. And we'll get our lava onto it. And a lever. Yeah, like I say, I'm going to change all this around because I'm not really happy with the setup of this for the time being. But we need this put together before we can really do anything. So that's looking nice. I think that's cool. Uh, let's go get some glass and start doing the glass. And I should have a fairly decent amount of glass actually in here already. Around the back. So let's get a load of this. There we go. And get you doing your cooking. It should work fine. And let's, uh, let's just, yeah, just put that on there for the time being. 
cool beans. All right, so you can see that I'm getting pretty hot when I'm near this smelly as well. So, so you know, it's just a reason you don't want to be too close to it. But that's going to do that. Now let's get a ticker tocker and we'll just pop you up there, I guess. Cool, cool. And I'm probably going to get another one of those. But that's going to make the glass for us. Now we can start making the parts for the tank, which should work quite nicely. So I'm going to let that do its cooking and we'll be back when it's, uh, when it's time to build our tank. So I've been cooking up a load of charcoal over here. We basically just took one of the wood barrels from downstairs and just left it cooking. This should hopefully give us a fairly decent amount of the stuff. Uh, but I think I'm going to take this and we're just going to see how long this lasts. Now, I did have enough scorched stuff, luckily, to make most of the tank. Although I couldn't make it as big as I wanted it. Oh my god, ghost. I couldn't make it as big as I wanted it to be. But it's fairly big, which is cool. So this guy is just over here. Now, we still need to put the glass in. I started digging through to try and make it so that we can have the liquid to go into it as well. And I hope this is going to work, because I've never actually built one of these properly before, so... It's kind of cool, isn't it? And we've got all the uh, glass being melted down in here. So let's grab a load of this. And we're going to put this guy together. And hopefully this is going to do the trick. Now we do want some inputs and outputs. Now have I got... Let's have a look. I need... I need... Some bricks. Ah, there we go. Alright. So... I think I can make another one of these. And we should be able to put this inside here. So I want this one to go here, I think. Yeah. All right. So we'll have the scorched duct going into this guy here. And to make sure it's all working fine, I guess... We'll put like a drain over here. Let's put the drain there. And then on here, we need to put down the deep tank controller in the middle, like that. And now we just fill it with glass, I guess. So let's go around and do that. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is going to work. There we go. So we'll get all of that and stuff in there. Fill all of this sides up. I really like this glass. This glass is really cool. There we go. Okay. So, hopefully, this is going to work. I don't know. We'll have to give it a try, won't we? But we've got all of this good stuff inside my barrel so let's take this out and I'm intrigued to know whether this is going to pull straight out of the barrel so if we put the barrel like up here and we put this to flame and we put the barrel like there it's gonna yeah nice charcoal going in the thing lovely good stuff so that's going in there which is great uh, we do need to put metally things in there. Oh, that, actually, no, we need to give this a redstone signal. That's the one. I always forget to do that. So let's put that on there. And whoof, there we go. It's starting to do things. Brilliant. So when we have the stuff come out of it, we're going to want... Let's get some thermal thingies and grab some fluidux. So I'm going to want these to come out and go around here, as long as they go in correctly and come into here. And we'll just bring it down. And there we are. And we have you coming out. Cool, cool. So hopefully now... Any liquids that we get in there should work just fine. I'll we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to leave all this open for the time being just in case I need to change it all around. But that's going to be that. So all that coal's going to go in there. It's going to start heating up. Now we do need to get ourselves something to actually smelt. So I guess we could give it a test run with some iron. Probably sounds good. Uh, we're actually going to grab the whole barrel, I think. So let's get out my 
I've already got my dolly. Brilliant. Yeah, so let's go get a spare one of these. So we'll grab you. And pop you in there. Good stuff. And with this, we're just going to exchange it with the one that's already got the iron up there. So this one. <laughs> it's going to be so cool. All right, so let's pop the regular one down here. We'll take you. Pop you back up there. I'm going to grab one like that. There we are. Cool, cool. And let's pop all this in here. Now, I don't know if it has to be made into the dust bits. It probably does. So let's do it this way. I'll pop you there. Grab a load of this. And return you to this. I do need to get a... Um, auto packager that would be really handy I, i'm probably going to make one of those for auto maintenance because that's going to be a really cool way of doing it if we make an auto packager yeah let's grab all the rest of this cool cool and mm, yeah let's do it this way so we'll get rid of you grab you actually no we want to set this to ores there we go All right. Well, it's going in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it has to reach a fairly high temperature before it'll actually do anything. Uh, if I remember rightly, it generally takes about hmm, about the time it takes to melt a charcoal block, not a piece. That's normally when you're good to go. And we shouldn't have any impurities because we've got this. And hopefully this is going to lead to us being able to triple our ore output. And then, as long as we've set this up correctly, and I have no idea if I have, <laughs> like I said, never made one before, we'll have to, uh, we'll see if this works. And if the stuff go in, goes in there, then brilliant, because then we've got a tank full of awesome stuff that we can hook up eventually to a big applied energistics network to have it instantly getting pulled off into different areas. It's going to be awesome. And the fact that it's all in different areas is also good. Oh, look, squids. Squids! <laughs> Isn't it cool having little squiddies going to go with me? It's so good. I love it. But yeah, once you've got this done with all the applied and logistics, it's going to be insane, I think. We're going to have ores coming out of our ears. I don't even have to have the barrels up there because the ore can just be instantly coming straight down here into this processing chamber. Um, I'm thinking of having the AA, AE main terminal area right here in the middle, like a column that goes up because that's the closest point to our tesseract. So it makes sense to have it really close to here and then everything else wiring-wise can just go underground, so... We can try and keep it as uh, as good looking as we can. Because I'm trying to make everything look a little bit nice. I'm sure you can already tell that. But let's see if we've got anything yet. It's definitely taking its time. Well, you know, I'm going to leave it, I think, for a little bit. We'll see what happens in like 5-10 minutes. And we'll come back to see if it's working. So we'll see you in a moment. Alright, it's working. Check this out. It's awesome. Getting all the iron inside our place. We've currently got 84 ingots worth of iron. It's insane. I did have to change a few things around though. So it looks like the scorched drains are what you need up here. Not the uh, not the scorched other thing or wherever I put it. The uh, yeah, the scorched inputs or whatnot. They, those don't work. It has to be the drains. So we got those up there. I got another two down here for draining the liquid out of for actually being used. And it seems to be working just fine. It's doing its thing. The yeah, one thing I have noticed though is you do get slag, which seems to be a bit of a byproduct. But that's fine because we can pull that out and have that go somewhere else. So that's that's perfectly fine. But you can see that we're getting all this iron going in here. We're currently running at 3,300, almost 3,400 degrees, which is insane. Uh, another thing that I did notice is it heats up so much faster with blocks of charcoal instead of charcoal. So it's, it's far better to use blocks of charcoal. It, it just literally just package them up and do it that way. And it heats up so much quicker. Um, but that's pretty much that. And that's making us loads and loads of iron. We've made up to 114 ingots now. <laughs> I think for smelting ore, we could now be sorted. Or oh, yes. And we could do something cool. Like we could grab this and we could have them coming out here. Because this works just like anything else now. Like nothing's changed with this. So we could have it coming out there. We could even have the liquids coming over here to like a casting area. Like, that would look really cool, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure about mixing, though, because I'm pretty sure the high oven 
won't mix to make alloys. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> so if we had uh, like the materials to make electrum, so silver and gold, I don't think it would mix them to make electrum, but I could be wrong there. <laughs> we'll have to see. But if it doesn't do that, that's actually really handy because that's the one thing that I don't like about the Tinker's smeltery is that it always mixes the metals together, doesn't it? So you always have to be a little bit careful on what you throw in there. So, you know, you can just throw it all in there and it's fine, but I prefer to have all my metals in their, in their kind of basic form than their, uh, than their mixed form. I don't know why, I just don't like them like that. But, whoa, 150 ingots. This is insane. <laughs> all the stuff, we can keep them in here. We can even have multiple of these. I might even make more of these, like have one there, there, and there. That would be so cool. We just have that doing its thing. This is so nice. We're getting so much from this. That was only like, what, two stacks worth of iron? And that was 128 ingots. 64 each, isn't it? 128 ingots. And we've already got 167 ingots. And we've still got all of this left. Insane. <laughs> wow. Cool beans. All right, guys. Well, that's probably going to be that for today's episode. Another kind of shortish one, but something that we needed to get done. Uh, I'm going to go around and I'm going to smart this place up, make it a little bit more fancy. As uh, I have a general tendency of breaking everything when I'm actually making an episode. When I'm not doing an episode, I can take my time and I make things look nice. But when I'm, <laughs> when I'm recording, I don't tend to do that. So that's going to be that. I'm going to go around, I'm going to do this, make it look a little bit nicer. Like having all these things poking out of where is horrible. So we'll change that around. Uh, we'll start making sure that we've got all of our ores processed in here. Maybe get another couple more of these tanks. I do have to make my way to the city again to try and get some more scorched bricks and bits and bobs like that. But that's fine. That's uh, not too much of a problem. And hopefully finish up the, uh, the little tanks around the edges so that it looks pretty funky. And then we'll get started with applied energistics because we have been letting our uh, area over here run for some time now. And it's starting to do quite a bit of work. Yes. Uh, the only problem is though, I need to put up a um, like an overflow point because we're overflowing with leaves. <laughs> so much leaf. Look, I'm going to basically, this pipe comes along here, goes into here and then goes along here. I'm going to get a nullifier and I'm going to put a nullifier in the corner up there. Only connected to the leaves and I'll set that to the furthest point. So that way, any additionals that we get will go into there. I think that's going to be a good way. Oh man, I forgot to put a bit of wood in there to do that as well. Oh. <laughs> but hey, it's going to do its thing, isn't it? But check it out. We've got like 17, 18 stacks worth of Never quartz now, it's kind of cool. A load of never warts, gas tears, we've got some cobalt, some ardite. I think it's working pretty well. And it's doing its thing pretty fast. The only other thing that I have been doing, which has been using the water up, but I think I've got it turned off at the minute. I, I don't know, let's go have a look. I thought I'd start making some snow because someone said somewhere that you can use snow on the ground and it cools you down. I'd like to test this. So I started making a load of snow. Now I did give it a go in a single player world. I didn't actually notice any difference at all. But I guess we can have a look. So I made some snow. Which I think is going to be kind of cool. Because the way I'm aware that environment works in this is uh, it kind of locks onto the nearest thing that could possibly be a heat source and it uses that. So if you're in a room that has like a snowy floor, but right next to you you've got a you've got a thermal expansion redstone furnace, it will take the heat from the furnace and not take into account that you've got a snowy floor. I think that's generally how it works. So we'll just have to see. But I, I'll try and make somewhere out of snow. And we'll see if that actually makes any difference. Because that'd be kind of, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to test out, wouldn't it? Yeah. But there we go, guys. That's going to be that for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are, then make sure to leave a thumbs up as it helps the channel out a great deal. And if you're new to the channel, I urge you to subscribe for more awesome content. 264 ingots. Oh, yes. And how much we got left to go? So much. <laughs> have yourself a great day. Have a good one as always. And goodbye.